Now I've got a fun little pattern for you today. Sometimes I just like to flip through a book I haven't tied out of in a while, find something cool. And I found one in Farrow and Allen's Flies for Trout. It's called the Tennessee Bee. Now it was created by Brad Weeks from Eastern Tennessee, and it's just a yellow jacket pattern. Now I rarely fish with bee patterns, but terrestrial season is just around the corner. I've seen a few wasps out in the barn, so I know they're out there. And this could be a fun one to fish. It was fun to tie anyway. So there it is in the vise, a Tennessee bee, or more commonly, just a simple little yellow jacket. Now the book said this should be tied in size 10 to 14. It's a 12. So one extra long barbless dry fly hook and black thread. We'll catch this in and take it almost to the back here. And the first thing we're going to catch in, some black floss. This is, I've got one strand here, but I want to use two. So I'm going to catch it in kind of in the, the middle right here. It's about maybe a five inch piece. We'll pull them together. So when we wrap the rib, we'll have two strands. So go ahead, take it to the back, back the thread off just a little bit. I'm going to park this with my magnet. Now put a little wax on our thread and some bright yellow dubbing. I'm going to use, this is just a, an acrylic yarn that I blended in my coffee grinder. It's a pretty bright stuff, so let's just go ahead and put a pretty fat noodle on here. Now the yellow jackets around here do have kind of a bulbous body. So if you can pull that off and make it just a little bit fatter in the middle, I think we'll get a, a, a fair representation of, you know, what the, the insect really looks like. I don't know if I have, it's a little bit fatter in the middle, so I think we're fine, but I got a little bit of scruff right there to take off. Now just pull these and you can spin them together if you want, but you don't really want them too tight. You want them kind of flat and wide, like a, a real yellow jacket's body would be. It's pretty black and yellow. Okay, those, that rib there, they may be a little bit thinner than I wanted, but I think we're gonna be just fine. So a few wraps to catch that off. Now just take some, elk hair, body hair, a really small little tuft of it, put it in your stacker. And you could certainly use deer hair for this. I think that would be fine. And it's not a lot and not real long. So maybe back to the end of that body right there. And this stuff is gonna flare up a little bit, but that's okay. You know, having a, a, a wing on a fly like this that flares a little bit will be perfectly fine. Okay, I think that's pretty good right there. I'm gonna kind of just hold this out of the way while I snip everything up front. Okay, that didn't get it perfect, but close enough. We can use our thread right here to kind of flatten this area out, make it a little easier to spin our hackle. And this hackle, just brown dry fly, going to put um, maybe three wraps and it can be kind of long. It looked like the one in the picture had the bottom part of it trimmed. I have not been doing that but um, we can take a look at it here in a second and, and see if we should. But let's do three wraps, see what that looks like for us. Okay, I think that's fine. And I'm gonna pull everything back, just make a little bit of room for a yellow head here. So 
So a little more wax and then a little bit more of that same dubbing we use for the body. Now I think we got some room for a whip finish right behind the eye here. And let's take a look at this one. I think that hackle is probably a little long. And if you snip it off at the bottom right here, it's going to affect how it floats for sure. But again, this thing is, is not going to be a high floater. And that L care will we'll kind of keep it up at least near the surface. So there you go, a Tennessee B or pretty plain yellow jacket pattern. I appreciate you watching everybody. Y'all take care and We'll see you next time.